guys, Emma is here. Welcome to Piano Well. So let's go ahead and I will guide you through this tutorial. Now, the first thing is that you don't want to miss while practicing this etude is that the very first note is a, a 16 note of semi-quiver. So it's not just a quiver out of triplet, but is down. Not. All right, so make sure. Now, the another thing that uh, in the left hand, when it comes to this uh, intervals in the bass, I prefer to play the bass together with the melody. So in the bar two, it will sound this way. Not from the bass to the top note. more stable. Uh, and the last thing is that, you know, we used to change the pedal um, as soon as a new harmony arises, right? Now, over here, <laughs> Scrabble's music is way too weird to use the regular rules of pedaling. So, surprisingly, if you're gonna hold the pedal for one, two, three lines, in a row, without changing it, it's still okay. <laughs> so instead of changing pedal every single bar, like we would do here again, if you're gonna hold it for the whole harmonies, that will not sound wrong. It will sound still okay. the bass is always the same, the bass is D sharp every time, so it kind of connects every harmony so they sound okay. So make sure you go and you play around with the pedal, don't just change it every single harmony. The same thing in the middle part. Hold it, still, still hold it, still hold it. Okay, you can change it over here. And over here again for the four two lines so do this guys and don't be afraid and then the last part the same <laughs> even if you don't use this system. <laughs> the next thing you probably want to want to do is uh, you want to rearrange the notes. You want to rearrange the notes in the left hand, especially with these jumps, like over the octaves, and with the right hand. Because if you're gonna play in the fast tempo, so alright, you can show everyone, yes, you can play this octave clear, you're good. But trust me, if you're gonna play it in the right in the right tempo with the right character of music, you don't wanna play it too slow. Because even if you're gonna play them accurately octaves, it's still gonna be slow, you know. So in order to uh, free yourself from these octaves and enjoy the music, I suggest you to simply take this A with the left hand over here and play with the right hand just this octave and one note everywhere. And do the same with left hand. When you see, for example, here, instead of make this leap, simply play it with the right hand because this note is just under your finger in the right hand. And again, be creative, guys, and go ahead and in 
every place like this, in similar places, use this. I'm not jumping here for octave. I'm working with the right hand because for right hand it's closer than for left hand. So here I take another note with left hand, then I take accompany the note with the right hand. <laughs> Little bit confusing, but it's much much better if comparably with if you gonna play as, as it's written. In the very end of this chord, so of course you're not gonna play it like, like it's written, <laughs> it's obvious. So how I actually do, I play octave separately and, and I, I take A and F with my left hand and I play together 6th and 5th. Three intervals, octaves, six and fifth together, and like this. So, so that's how I do this. So now let's <laughs> uh, let me give you some suggestions about how to overcome this um, large leaps that you have to make very accurate in the fast tempos. <laughs> and still not to be distracted by that while uh, creating beautiful music. So, uh, the first thing, we're gonna use elbow. Um, the people who follow me with my piano assistant, they know <laughs> the rules. So, we're gonna move our wrist left <coughs> because of the uh, melody pattern, and then on the same octave, you move your elbow to the right. It's not even dramatic. 
as D sharp and it's not beautiful as B flat minor, kind of beautiful, but it's just D sharp minor. It's cloudy, it's not clear, so nothing good is gonna happen here, guys. <laughs> These are beautiful, definitely, but they still have um, sadness in them. It's like a memory of something good. I really apologize for my English. <laughs> I hope you understand the meaning. Then here, even darker, right? Comparably with.
uh, lovely sforzando in the middle part. And here. Sunday is in piano, you have to do this in piano. So uh, usually when you know when we see sforzando on piano, we usually just don't do sforzando, don't make sforzando. Or we make sforzando but it's not piano anymore. <laughs> so uh, to make it right, you still have to imagine sounds like in violins very soft in the beautiful magical harmonies here, but uh, on absolutely another side singing side you're gonna intonate this unison with slice for sound so in this case the fingertips will still play um, soft sound but the weight of your body will make nice for sound so this for sound still can be sharp but piano that will still bring the character that we need in this piece. It's like a star shining somewhere through this old uh, cloudy thing. And the same here. This one is easy because it's already gathering the dynamics here, so it's not piano anymore, but still you have to make this for Tanda. It brings so much expressiveness. to sing exactly accents. You can watch my video called Articulations. Alright, the most exciting part is phrasing. Uh, scrubbing here is just super nice for us. <laughs> this piece could be textbook for teaching the phrasing because it's so simple here and it's so regular. No confusion, no complications. So. Uh, you can guys who play the song take this chord and just mark with your pencil one motif, one bar, one phrase, two bars, one sentence, four bars. That means that two motifs, two bars, would make one phrase, and two phrases, four bars, would make one sentence. So now the uh, Confusion for me here was how to actually find the right limits of motif because we have two variants here. We can go three, four, one, two means or we can go two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. In this case. Two three four one because if I do three four one two, then two in the middle of the bar would have kind of a down a release of energy, which I really don't want in this piece because this piece is just like poof, you're just accumulating all the power uh, through the whole piece and just like this, like, like the rocket <laughs> flying. So uh, if I do three four one two, I would lose energy. Three, four, one, over here would be like dropping 
So this is an exact exception actually. So the phrase here we consist of three motifs. One motif. Alright? So there will be three motifs and the last motif will be the most important. 
Now, if we go to the phrase thing, so here we're gonna have as well as we had three motives in one phrase, here we're gonna have three phrases in one sentence. He probably decided to change the pattern to make culmination far more expressive. That's my guess. <laughs> so, the first uh, uh, phrase is gonna be, um, so it's gonna look like this, less, more and more. So the last third phrase is gonna be more important. So let's go on. First less. enough we have to internally sing everything we have to do this through intonation we have to emphasize through the way that we feel while internal singing uh, watch my video about phrasing that explains everything <coughs> uh, the last part um, I want to talk about is the structure of music form of music so uh, here we're gonna have three big blocks, three big sections, and each of these sections will have beginning part, development, rising to climax, and climax. So, beginning, development, rising to climax, climax, and middle part, even a little bit higher, beginning, rising to, beginning, development, rising to climax, climax, and the very last sections will have like the, <laughs> the most important, beginning, development, rising to climax, and climax. <clears throat> and rising to climax in climax will have even longer sentence because we will have three phrases in, in the sentence. So it's gonna be even more dramatic and more expressive. So now let me show you these parts exactly where they are. So this one beginning. Over here I go to development. So basically every part is one sentence, I just give you a hint guys, it's usually in every music like this, one sentence, uh, you can just give it a title, this sentence is beginning, this sentence is development. So this one, development, and over here, rising to climax. than previous block the, but still it's just the beginning of this section what usually students do they just like like just throwing this this the the shirt <laughs> apart and I just go he's hysterically here and then there's no space to go anymore so please 
Please hold on here, it's just the beginning of the last section. So... Rising to uh, development. And rising to climax, everyone can guess. structure the understanding of structure of music through singing so that would affect our playing it wouldn't just be the theory in our mind <laughs> uh, that would be it i hope that wasn't too long thank you so much for watching see you in my next video bye bye